Ace Combat Assault Horizon is pretty much universally agreed to be the worst Ace Combat game, but honestly, I never really gave it a fair shake. It came out back in the Stone Ages when physical media was still relevant. So I rented the game from a red box, played it, thought, well, that sucked, and went on with my life. Jump ahead seven years and I'm sitting here trying to think of another video idea when I see Assault Horizon in my Steam library. How bad could it really be? Granted, it did disappoint me in the past, but surely it's not the flaming trash pile everybody makes it out to be. Well, after playing the game again, I have to say, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. The graphics are pretty good for their time, the music is great, and as a flight game, it's still miles ahead of the competition. So I just gotta come out and say it. Assault Horizon is not a bad game. Now, that being said, I hate it. Releasing just one month before Modern Warfare 3, Assault Horizon was a pathetic attempt to cater to the Call of Duty crowd. Everything that made the Ace Combat series great was tossed to the wayside in favor of stuff like USA vs Russia storyline, evil Russians who somehow take control of the government, nuclear MacGuffin, bad guy whose name begins with Ma and ends with Ov, ghost, chopper gunner part, the COD 4 nuke scene, the COD 4 nuke scene again, AC-130 mission, regenerating health, quick time Time events, literally the exact same font as Modern Warfare, but ultimately the game's setting and story is just the coat of paint on top of the core gameplay. And seeing how this is an ace combat game, the core gameplay is probably great, right? The second you start playing the game, it puts you on autopilot as you chase a bogey through a city. The enemy fighter can absorb an infinite amount of missiles and bullets until it gets to the part where it's scripted to die. So this whole part might as well just be a cutscene since you have no control over it. And I hope you enjoyed that, because that's the new dogfight mode mechanic. It wouldn't be so bad if you could just ignore it, but sure enough, there's a lot of enemies in the game that can only be killed with DFM, including all of the bosses. This makes what should be the high point of the game, the legendary duels with enemy aces, into monotonous slogs that pale in comparison to previous games. It's a boring system that takes all the skill out of dogfight fighting and reduces it to the equivalent of a Mario Party minigame. Take down the entire Yellow Squadron single-handedly using nothing but your raw piloting skills. Keep them in the red circle. Dogfight a squadron of enemy aces inside of a narrow canyon, dodging missiles and cliff walls alike. Keep them in the red circle. Battle an experimental superplane by jousting him and dodging his shot at the last possible second. Keep them in the red circle. So yeah, the dogfighting is bad, which is not what you want to be hearing people say about your fighter jet game, but thankfully the game gives you a break from those pesky planes and switches to a turret section. You gun down hundreds of rebels, whatever that means, but then, oh no, you get hit by an explosion. Wow, I've never seen a scene like this before. You're then introduced to the cast. In this one, your character, Bishop, actually talks. Though his vocabulary is extremely limited, and for whatever reason, they decided that when he's in his jet, he should sound like he's vlogging from the inside of a car. Losing oil pressure. There's also Guts, your wingman, whose entire personality is that he likes alcohol. But at least he has a personality, unlike the rest of the characters. The first actual mission sees the Americans defending an oil field. America and oil, classic writing, and let me guess, the Russians love vodka. There is not enough vodka. The next mission is a helicopter mission, which they threw in there to try to switch things up, but it's terrible. You hold the left trigger to lock onto enemies and then hold the right trigger to shoot them. Rinse and repeat for literally 20 minutes. Uh, there's an AC-130 mission in there for some reason, and then, to nobody's surprise, the comically evil Russians betray you. This level marks the first appearance of Markov, the primary antagonist. He has a shark mouth on his fighter jet, which is the only interesting thing about him. Next up is an air-to-ground mission where they don't even trust that you're capable enough to hit a stationary target on the ground. They give you an optimal firing path thing that railroads you past every target so you don't have to think for yourself. Thankfully, you don't have to use it, but even if you play the mission normally, there's still big green lines all over your HUD that just get in the way. Then you have to attack a fleet, but this time they force you to use their stupid autopilot targeting thing, which makes the mission suck. And then, w wait a minute, is this a new gameplay concept that's not terrible? Oh my god, I don't believe it. Now it's time for the Battle of Moscow, where the Americans and the good Russians try to retake the city from the evil Russians. There's a crappy helicopter part again, and then shock and awe again, and then after fighting Markov, we finally get some actual story. It turns out that Markov is mad at the US for bombing his girlfriend, so to get revenge, he nukes... Moscow? Bishop and friends teleport back to America to intercept Markov in Miami, and okay, I gotta admit that it is kinda cool when you realize you're doing the same mission from the start of the game, because then you're like, oh thank god my guy's about to die, then I can finally stop playing this. But nope, stupid guts eats the missile for you, so you have to keep playing. There's a mission where you shoot down vodka guy, there is not enough vodka. and then the grand finale. A dogfight over Washington, D.C., which translates to shooting at Markov for 10 minutes until he's scripted to die in one of the worst boss fights ever. Closing in on the White House. Zero miles to the White House. Colonel, we don't have time. 
you blow up the nuke in the air, which of course means it doesn't hurt anything, and finally, as a consolation prize, you're treated to the best game ending of all time. So yeah, I know it's cliche to hate on Assault Horizon, but you know what? Ultimately, my opinion doesn't even matter, because the critical reception was pretty positive and it sold a million copies. I'm still pissed we had to wait so long for Ace Combat 7, but Assault Horizon was technically just a spin-off and not an official main series game, so I'm content to just pretend it never happened and move on. Which is why I just made a 5 minute video complaining about it.